America today. I want you to see a picture on here. I, I'm going way long here today, but it's anointed, so you just hang in there and see what God's going to do. This is a picture of yours truly here, and uh, sitting right beside me, which would be on your left, is the Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, Judge Roy Moore. We were at uh, uh, Georgetown University a number of years ago, and our doctor, uh, we received our doctorate degrees there. Th that's a group, I don't remember how many there were, 13 or 14, highly distinguished people with uh, amazing uh, uh, Christian uh, resumes, and I slipped in the back door and slipped on a robe and joined them. Now, <laughs> Judge Roy Moore, I want you to hear me. This illustrates where we are today. Judge Roy Moore of Alabama, one of the soft-spokenest, most brilliant minds in America, and a devout Christian. He is very soft-spoken. He's not an activist. He's not a troublemaker. But when he was elected by the people as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the state of Alabama, he wanted a beautiful granite monument of the Ten Commandments there. Uh, as, uh, that's where our laws come from, and as a Christian. I don't have time to get into the story, but the short side of that, some of you might know it if you were in this church. You, I'm sure you did because we talked about it. Uh, but Judge Moore fought to have those Ten Commandments there. He was ultimately ousted as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Alabama because he refused to have those Ten Commandments removed. It's the basis of our entire law. I happen to know the backstory of some of that and know that some of the people involved in his ouster did not have pure motives. But that's another story. But I happen to know the backstory. He was thrown out as the Chief Justice of the uh, Supreme Court of Alabama. But that wasn't the end of the story. Judge Moore came back on the ballot, and the people of Alabama reversed what the government, the king of the people of the United States said, and they overwhelmingly re-elected him, and he sits today as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Alabama. You see, the king... The government of the United States, the king, and their cohort said, no, Chief Justice, you're out of here because that's contrary to where we're going and taking the people of the United States. And the people got a chance to vote, and they rose up and said, no, thank you. We want Judge Roy Moore as our Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Alabama. Oh, I could go on. It's just a great example of the king who is trying to call all the shots and the battle against the people of the United States of America says, no, king, that is not what we want. Oh, it used to be the king of England, but now it's the king of Washington, D.C., and all of their power brokers. Our leaders forced him out, but the people put him back in. People voting traditional marriage, and the government overturns it. I forgot the number, 13 states or more that voted traditional marriage. But the king, the United States of America, came back and said, No, we are no longer a nation of the people and for the people. We are a nation that is controlled from Washington, D.C. And the power of the king. And the king's uh, uh, workers, the judges out there, said, We don't care what you people think in such and such a state. We are decreeing to you that we'll tell you what you will do in your state. The king has spoken and the people are left on the side of the road. You think we don't have problems in America today? You better wake up, my friend. A civil war is brewing. And I might add, I've mentioned that term to you for several weeks, and for the first time I heard a national commentator use that word, a very respected one. And I thought, well, they're learning. They're figuring it out. I'm not blowing smoke. I'm not interested in these kinds of problems, folks. I like my life. I would like to just go and sit on a beach for a couple of weeks and let my wife recuperate. But instead, we're having to do some fighting for the very soul of America, for your life and your children's lives and your grandchildren's lives. We're in serious trouble in America. We're fighting. Is it going to be a people-controlled country? Or is it going to be a government-controlled country? And we've let the government get so powerful that it is a serious and challenging battle for the people to take back our nation today. But there is hope. And that hope will come through you and I, not through our leaders. If you're waiting on Washington to get their act together, you're wasting your time. 